my work as a house whisperer is to see how your life and where you live work together. Some people live in caravans, some people live in yurts and teepees and tents, but some people live in very troubled houses like this one. Are you living in a house where you feel uncomfortable? You have the feeling of dread, of fear every time you come home? So Christian, we're here at the Green Gathering site this year and it's the site of a very old and run-down looking house. Absolutely, and uh, when I was here yesterday, I came up to the house and really felt this, um, I don't know, real sadness. Of course, it's a dilapidated property, so it's, it's going to feel uh, a little bit uh, run down, but there's just something a little bit more. And uh, as I projected into it, I could kind of um, just feel this devastation around it. And then interestingly today, I find out that during the Second World War, it was used by the American Air Force as target practice. Unbelievable. Why would they choose such a, a magnificent building to bomb? Um, Maybe a field with a scarecrow in it would be, would be better. You'd have thought so. They'd have, um, it would have given them a little bit more accuracy to play with, but uh, clearly they didn't actually achieve... Um, their mission of destroying this building. No, it's still standing. As you can, as you can clearly see, it's, uh, it's quite a magnificent building. Do you know anything about the building itself? I understand that it was Sir John Soane's house um, and the John Soane Museum in London. So he was quite a, a person of his time. So um, I wonder if his spirit is still lingering around here. Could John Soane's spirit still be in the house? Could you actually look at the house and be able to tell whether the spirit's still there or not? I would like to get inside it if we can. I know it's all boarded up and railed up, but if I could um, somehow get in, possibly during the night, um, we may be able to see, uh, yeah, if he is. And if his spirit is still around, it would be fascinating to see what he would say about what's happened here. How would that actually work, Christian? Um, let's say his spirit was still in the house and you went in there and were able to communicate with his ghost. Is it, would you say ghost? Yeah, the ghost, the spirit of... What, would, what, would, what could you kind of preempt happening? Would the house fall down? Uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, we're talking at a very different, a different level of vibration. Um, and if somebody hasn't totally released themselves at that moment of death, either through trauma, through the heart, or whatever reason, if somebody dies peacefully, then it's more likely that they will move on to their next incarnation. But if they get stuck in between, that's when what we commonly call ghosts are stuck in that in-between world and it's just a question of tuning into that mm. and either seeing it in your inner eye mm -hmm. but then when you do that um, you can then communicate with them and speak to them because they're like you and I they're just they have no body but they are there with um, unresolved issues in life right. and they are seeking help from uh, people in the manifest world. And so they will come to uh, people like myself who, who work with uh, spirit, um, often to resolve the issues that have been unresolved in their lifetime. And once those issues are resolved, then they can be released and they can move on with their journey. Okay, these people in the manifest world, the, the normal people, everyday people out there that live in normal everyday houses, mm. um, maybe they're not so old to possibly have a ghost or, you know, does a, does a house have to be old to have a ghost or can it not, be any age? No, not necessarily. The, the older the house, of course, the more chances there are of life happening. Yeah. But I've been into very modern houses and uh, found very strange paranormal activity going on. Uh, particularly when uh, there are earth energy lines which 
act like spirit traffic lines, like the underground. Right, really? Um, and Is that like a ley line? Well, like a ley line, a geopathic earth line. Um, these are energy streams, like the, the blood streams of the earth. And so energies are flowing through this. And um, often spirit will travel along these lines. So somebody doesn't have to necessarily die in this location, but if they've linked up to a spirit traffic line, it's like getting on the tube and getting off at this house here. And so somebody could turn up from miles away and appear, and whether it's an old house or a new house. So that's why new houses, depending where they're built, on which part of the earth, and if they connect to the spirit lines, then they can actually travel... Uh, Because in a strange way, it's a kind of knowing that uh, if somebody is working here, for example, and releasing spirit, um, it's a kind of known thing in that world and people will come. They'll travel by tube to this house because they know there's an opportunity to release. Here we are. We're at the new site of the Green Gathering. I'm here with the notorious House Whisperer. Uh, Christian Kariaku. Now he has come here to talk about um, a very old looking house on this site. Uh, Christian, tell us a bit about the house. Well, I, um, I came here yesterday and went up to the house. I, I love old buildings. I mean, I love buildings anyway as an architect. Sure. Um, and ever since a child, I would always go past a house and be able to sense and feel its soul, feel its um, pain, its anger, its emotion. Uh, and I, I didn't kind of think about that as a child, but um, of course I work with this now so much that it all makes sense that even from that age, I was able to just instantly tune in to right. the whole emotion of a building and um, everything that's gone on over the years yeah over many lifetimes you know the whole lifetime of that building yeah is actually encapsulated and held in the fabric of the building now and so going up to that building yesterday yes I, I could feel its devastation its um just abandonment and obviously it's now a ruin uh, great disrepair and uh, this morning I find out that it was used during the Second World War for target practice by the American Air Force. Incredible. Incredible. Why would they choose such a beautiful building for target practice, I ask you? Yeah, and you can still see the bullet holes from the aircraft guns, which I, I just find extraordinary. Um, and it's now a grade, listed, uh, grade one listed building. So, bit late, isn't uh, it? A bit late, really. Bit late for that, yeah. You, you say that you could see the devastation and, and mm. I mean, it's pretty, pretty obvious there that it is in a state of disrepair and it is gutted. I mean, is there anything that you feel um, physically from the building? You know, because I, I would look at that building and say, yeah, it's obviously had it. Um, yeah. what, what are you feeling more than that? Well, the work I do as the house whisperer and what is absolutely crucial in this process for me is tuning in to the story of the house and everybody who's lived there before. Because what is left behind um, by life Mm. over the years uh, is left in a kind of uh, mental soup. It's in the space. And that's why when people walk into the house, uh, in any house, whether they're buying it or visiting friends, they will feel the atmosphere or not want to go into it or they will say I could cut the atmosphere with a knife or the atmosphere feels like walking through treacle we use these daily expressions and so this is what I'm talking about as well what is left lingering in the air uh, after many uh, lifetimes of people's emotions and loves and losses and often suicides, you know, will leave quite a mark. Yeah. Um, All that is there to be read and understood. And if there is resolution that hasn't happened in somebody's life, Mm. uh, that will get locked into um, 
quite a tight ball of energy which you can walk into a house and it's like walking into a brick wall sometimes. Mm. Yeah. So people out there that have uh, problems within their households, um, maybe they're arguing, maybe they're unhappy, mm. maybe they're not very well, you, um, you claim to be able to go into those houses and, uh, and solve all the problems? Well, what, what, I, what I try to do with people is to show them... Well, first of all, they will ask me, they have certain problems. Uh, take, take the one about we always argue when we come home. Right. But when we're away on holiday, everything's good. Uh, but every time we come back to our home, we'll argue, for example. Yeah. And what I often find, if you trace back the history, is that the people who owned the house before always argued, or got divorced, or went bankrupt. And we call this the predecessor energy. It's the energy of what's happened before, and it gets um, left in the atmosphere. It's like, like um, an accident black spot on a road there is always an accident in the same place. We can come back to that because it's um, another okay, yeah. category of earth energy. Sure. Um, but this energy that is left in a building by the previous owners, somebody else walks in and they take over mm. the energy and emotion of the previous people. And they start to argue without realizing why. Now, energy is eternal, isn't it? Energy never gets lost. It, uh, we can talk scientific. Um, but um, ultimately, energy just gets transformed, transmuted, but never gets lost. It just changes form. So it can change from a negative form to a positive form? Um, when we use negative and positive, it's more about the way we look at <clears throat> the way energy is yeah. and how it affects different people in different ways. So what is negative to one person is positive to another. It's like sure. a loss of money by one person is a gain by another, as just, a kind of example. I was just thinking, if you went into, um, into a house and there was some negative energy mm. and you cleared it um, and dealt with that problem, <clears throat> obviously the energy has to go somewhere. Where does it go? Does it go to the next <laughs> house, next door? Um, for me, it's not about clearing the energy. We use that word space clearing, but effectively we're not space clearing. Right. What we're doing is resolving the issues around uh, that particular um, uh, subject matter. Um, we're looking at what is the story that's running, and more importantly, why has the current owner chosen that house with this package of energies, yeah. this package of stories. What is the inner story in their life that's attracted a house that has similar resonance, similar stories? Mm. And my work as the house whisperer is to actually find out what that common thread is. Because mm. once you've found that, you can then unravel that and get the owners to see why they chose the house. Sure. What is the issue inside them that they need to resolve for their life uh, or their relationship, their marriage, whatever is going on. And once they see it, mm -hmm. they have the choice to do something about it. As long as it's in the subconscious, yeah. it runs our life. But as soon as you bring it to the surface, which is what I help people to do, yeah. it allows it to be seen. They can see it and then they have a choice. Do I want to deal with it or not? Live with it or get rid of it. Absolutely. <laughs>